With us now is a friendly face on the host seat, and that's because I have Barton Adams with me. And Barton, who is our guest today? Our guest is the legend Danny Mixon, a legend in entertainment for jazz and contemporary music. So excited to have you here. Welcome thank to the you. show. How are you? Thank you for having me. Well, thank you. And thank you for playing some beautiful tunes in the green room. <laughs> and I hope that we're going to hear some more of you tingling the ivory. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, it might be plastic. I don't. I don't think it's ivory. But it's still. How, how did no. you think that that sounded? It to was you? okay. You know, for an electric piano, it's not a Steinway. So. Right. Right. <laughs> no. Right. It's 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 like a Steinway light. Yeah. That's yeah, what light, I like. Light, light. Yeah. <laughs> if you touch it real light, you might get yeah. something good out of it. Yeah. But it sounded yeah. beautiful. Your playing yeah, is fabulous. You. And Barton, in particular, you wanted to um, shine a light because you're a huge fan. Absolutely. You know, I know I've been to a few uh, concerts that Danny has played for. Was very impressed. You know, he's a great friend of the family, and I think you know we want to pay homage to great entertainers. You know, and let people know. You know the the past, and let's, let's and let's take it to the future too. And talking about homage, you have a brand new network. Absolutely. I'm so excited for you. Yeah, it's called Homage Land TV, and it's about paying homage to great entertainment from the 70s up to the 21st century. Now, is that because you tried to play piano as a kid, but you thought it was a chore? Yeah, I, I you know my grandmother played the piano every day, Danny, mm -hmm. and I would <laughs> run past her and run outside to play, you know, play with my friends, and she wanted me to learn the piano. So she tried to teach me the piano, and it lasted about two weeks. <laughs> and, you know, but it's well, all it wasn't about, pretty after that. <laughs> right, but it's about, pay, uh, as you said, it's about uh, paying homage. Easy for me to say, I'm tongue twisted today for some reason. I must be excited to be sitting next to you, Barton Adams. <laughs> um, but it's about paying homage to those in the industry that deserve us to shine a light on them. Yes. And absolutely. that's a great new network. You're doing all kinds of fun things with that. Yes, thank so, you. to you, Playing piano, so I guess you wanted to ask him if it was a chore, right, for Danny? Yeah, was you, it a when you chore introduced for you? It to the piano, was it a chore? Was it something that your family made you do, or was it something that you really gravitated to? Well, what, hap what had happened? Was I have a, a similar story. Um, I was a tap dancer before yeah. I was a pianist. So after tap dancing school, we go to my grandmother's house in Harlem. She had a piano, my mother's piano, and so my my grandmother would sit at the piano. And uh, and played the piano, you know. And uh, so anyway, I'd be looking at her and looking. At her. She said, "Well, get up on the stool, you know." And she showed me uh, some chords and and single notes. And I said, "Oh, wow, this is beautiful, you know." So anyway, one weekend we came over there because classes was on Saturdays, you know. And she says, "You know something? We're gonna give that boy some lessons." I said, oh. <laughs> so my sister and I, you know, went and um, did some private lessons. And um, and what had happened was uh, the piano teacher, after two, three years that I uh, was in my life, he passed away. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry to hear that. And what had happened after that was I I vowed that, that I will continue. Okay. Because he was that wonderful to me, wow. you know? Wow. And so that's how I came along. And I went to performing. I was still a dance major, but I still was slipping on the side. <laughs> Until performing, I told me, said, well, you know something? Uh, dancing uh, has a short life. I said, uh-oh, <laughs> I better make a choice. Oh. You know, so I choose to play the piano. And um, it's been very good to me, you know. Uh, it took me around the world many, many, many times, you great, know. Great. And, uh, and, and, and it helped me in my everyday life, too. Uh, and I, I meet people, you know, and learn how to work with people that you even never met, mm. you know, to make music. That's another whole ability. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, especially that, I called you up for the last minute, man, can you play the piano tonight? I said, who this? <laughs> yeah. I never worked with him before. Mm. But to have to the, the, be able to adjust, you know, um, it's a beautiful thing, you know. A lot of people can't do that, you know. Right, a lot of people will be, you know. Now, do yeah. you read music or do yes. you play by ear no, both? I, I do, do both. both. You do I do both. both. Yeah. And, and it, I'm glad I, I do both. I know. I think that's a really important skill to have, you know? right? Yeah. Because if somebody can, like, sing something like, la, 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 right. la, 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 la,
Uh, continue. I'm also a professor at the New School. Yes, because you know? that was one of Barton's yeah. questions. I saw. Go, go, you asked him that question. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I wanted to ask you, how do you keep your students engaged? You know, because when when I was running past, I love music, but when yeah. I was running past my grandma at the piano. It, you know, it was th that lack of engagement that made me follow through. So how do you keep students at the new school or private lessons? Private lessons, I would, you know, I give them what I, they need technically. And then I find out what song they like. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. And so um, I feed them the technique and then something they like. Right. You know, and then they say, oh, I can, I, the one they like, oh, I get into this, boom, 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 boom. I say, okay, but don't forget the technique. Okay. You know, okay. and that keeps them balanced. It's like baby food. Yes, you know? it is. <laughs> like you got to get them the baby to eat the peas, yeah, and then right. you want to put in the sweet potato. Right, right, right. You, right. Know, you, you know? can't be banging them over the head. No, you got to eat it. You got to no, no, no. Right. But uh, it's been it's been working for me. Good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, unfortunately, Sidney Poitier passed away. You know, last last month or so now. Mm -hmm. And um, I was surprised because on TV they had a movie called Paris Blues that he played this jazz musician with Paul Newman and even Diane Carroll. I was like blown away, you know, my child, childhood idols and stuff. And so what is your favorite jazz movie, if you have one, that you like that portrays you know, how you feel about the music in, in your life, if you have one? Well, uh, or around, documentary. Well, uh, uh, Around Midnight. Around Midnight? Okay, Dexter great. Gordon. Dexter Gordon. Yeah, okay. yeah. That, that's, okay. I didn't see that, but now I have something. Yeah, yeah you got to see it. <laughs> <laughs> if we still buddy. have video stores, I could go down there now. Yeah, oh, buddy. <laughs> so I'll have to look for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, great, and great. that's real close, you know, um, situation mm -hmm. that uh, I, you know. I, I also um, was involved with um, uh, teaching uh, Danny Glover piano for, for wow. a, movie, a movie called The Honey Dripper. Okay. You know? Okay. And we became very good friends, and um, right, and he right. does a lot for jazz on um, with the Jazz oh, never, Foundation never of America. That. Okay, you know who helps a lot of jazz musicians like myself, you know. But he's on the board, you know, and um, so it, it, you know there's special people out there that also you know supporting this jazz that's born in America. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we need more support of this music born in America. We need to be on ABC. We need to be on Well, not today CB on CBS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. You know, but, um, <laughs> but I, do, I do know what you're saying. You know, we you need gotta, that, and, right. and live. We know, you know, yeah. it's about live. Yeah. And and young people and, and, and even little kids love it when they hear it live. Okay. Okay? okay? You, you just can't take it for granted that they, oh, they're not gonna like it. One, or one, they, they get engaged, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful thing. So, so this thing called jazz, mm -hmm. you know, what does it mean to you? And where do you see jazz going? Is jazz, you know, you know when, when I graduated, we had the disco scene, you know, and, and then they said, disco, it's dead, <laughs> you know. So where do you, what does jazz dead. mean to you and where do you see it going from, from, from here? Well, the jazz to me is um, a healing spiritual music. You know, it's a spiritual music that you have to um, be yourself for it to be presented correctly. You know what I mean? You can't hide behind nothing. You don't have no dancing girls and, <laughs> you know what I mean, and the fireworks and all. You got to be, you got to sell you. Okay. I you know what I'm saying? I agree. It's like the soul. The, the yeah, soul, yeah. The soul. the soul of the person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jazz, the blues, yeah, the, all that. It's it, like the good. It has it ha the presentation has to be that way. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and that's what I love. When, you know, to be able to play for people what I feel, what I feel right now at the moment. Okay. 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 Once I play the, the melody that everybody knows, mm -hmm. then when I take that solo, I'm plugged into something else different. I noticed that today, too, in the green room, because you're playing Ain't Misbehaving. <laughs> da, 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 da. And, I just, and I wasn't singing because I just wanted to hear you play, right? Yeah. I wanted to understand. And I thought to myself, I was like, and then I knew at that one point, you just went and you did your thing. And I was like, I noticed it. And I was like, wow, that's beautiful. Well, that's, and that's the, that's the beautiful thing. Uh, uh, the answer to your question where it's going we got to keep going forward. Okay. Okay? Because there's a lot of stuff that's, um, that people have to learn that's already, but we got up and coming people that's been here in my, in my genre, in where I'm at, and age and everything, that people never didn't know, don't know about. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And so 
they have to be exposed more. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what Homage Land TV is about. We want to give that exposure. We just don't want people to just pass on or, you know, or be forgotten. We want to show it so that the new generation can take it and remix it, you mm -hmm. know, and, and keep it and keep it going. Keep it alive. Keep yeah, it alive. because they, they got to know the root before you change. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, but a lot of young people want to take it from the top and don't want to deal with the bottom. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you got to, you got this go just like that. You know, so you know. What colors to bring to the situation? Mm -hmm. Wow. So if you, imagine this, if you were going into the studio now for either your last album or your next new album, if you could only pick one performer to collaborate with, who would that performer be? Ooh. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to spoil the surprise. Uh, no, but he, no, no. he asked me, he said, no trick questions. I said, I got one for you. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not a trick question, no, though. It's just, it's just a deep question. Is there somebody you'd like to work with? Yeah. Well, I'm working with a, a person that um, already is my musical partner. Her name is uh, Antoinette Montague. Okay. And um, she's about jazz woman to the rescue. Nice. Wow. You understand? Jazz woman to the rescue, and, and she really rescued a lot of young people, and teach them and take them under their wing. Wow. But I would like to, to collaborate with her to do that uh, that piece. You know what I mean? There you go. Uh, it was a lot of people that um, that are passed on that I want to collaborate, and, but I don't see nobody in front of there for me. You know? Thank so you. Um, it's, it's like I said, I want to work with the people that that are alive. You know, bringing it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. Thank you, um, thank you for this. Thank you for bringing such a wonderful guest. Thank you for the Danny, opportunity. Happy journeys to you. Also, uh, yes. April sixteenth. Yeah. I'm going to be in Brooklyn at four fifty six Nostrand Avenue, a place called Sisters Place. Nice. You know, and it's going to be with my quartet, and featuring Miss Antoinette Montague, jazz woman to the rescue. Okay. Ah, okay. She wears a cape and everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got me on that one. <laughs> it's real. It's like real. That. It's real. Okay. You know? All right. Well, let's go to that. You want to go? Yeah. Okay. Hey, and if you're watching at home and uh, you happen to be in the area, join us.